Hi everyone, this is Nikki with Design Like a Pro and I'm going to talk to you about how to format your images taken right out of the camera and take them right into your print project. The reason I want to show you this is because this is a common thing that's going to happen with the photos that you take in camera. One thing to note is this will greatly depend on the settings in your camera, but most cameras today take high resolution photos. The problem is that when you bring them into Photoshop, you'll notice that they are 72 dpi. Now there's still high resolution image because of their overall size, so you can definitely use them in your print projects. But my workflow is typically to convert them to 300 dpi before I use them. This ensures that you don't have any problems and you have the highest resolution image possible. So let's fire up Photoshop and I'll show you what I mean. So here we have a photo that I recently shot and I'm going to go to image, image size to show you what I'm talking about. So you'll notice here resolution is 72 dpi. So we've learned that 72 dpi images are typically low resolution used on the web. But the thing to notice is the width of this image is quite large. It's 47 inches by 71 inches adding a few decimal points there. So overall, this is a high resolution image, but it's at 72 DPI. So we're gonna wanna change this. Now this is a trick that I use, and it's worked for my print projects because I really wanna make sure that I'm using high resolution images. And I know that when I save them in a PDF format, when I go and pre-flight this project, if I'm not using 300 DPI or higher images, it will run an error. So by doing this step, it avoids that error and ensures that you have a high resolution photo. Now note that this does not work if I were to get this image off of the internet. And I'll show you what I mean and what happens if you actually use a low resolution 72 DPI image and try to jack it up to 300 DPI. So we'll talk about both of those things. But first let's take our high resolution image and convert it to 300 DPI. So there's one thing that you need to note under image size and that is this right here. We're going to change this to 300 DPI but we do not actually want to change the pixel dimensions because we're not actually increasing the photo size. We just want to change the resolution. And let me show you what I mean. If I were to just change this to 300 DPI, notice that my pixel width and height go up, but the document size stays the same. We don't want to actually change the pixel dimensions because that's going to increase the resolution of our photo and it's going to take it out of what it was originally shot at, which if it's a good photo, could be okay, but we don't actually want that. So what you want to do is take note of one of these dimensions. You don't need to memorize both. So I just usually go with the width. Okay, so it's 3401. So when we change this to 300, we want to go back up here and change this to 3401. And now you see what your image size changes to. It changes to almost an 11 by 17. That's still a large image, but it's not 47 inches, which is a huge image at 72 dpi. So basically what you did here was you changed your photo to be a 300 dpi image, but you retained the pixel dimension and kept it the right size. And if I hit OK here, you'll see that nothing happens. And that's what you want. You do not want to see your photo increase. For example, if I undo what I just did and change this to 300 dpi and not change back the pixel dimensions and hit OK, my photo is going to jump really large. See? So now it's it's even bigger. And it's it looks OK because it was a high resolution image to begin with, but I usually like to keep my photos at the original pixel dimension that they were shot at. So that's why we go back to what that is. Now, this will be different for everybody because each photo is going to be a different size depending on the camera that you have, but the technique that I showed you is the same. Now let me show you what happens if the image is taken, for example, off of the web and it's already a low resolution image. And to demonstrate that, I'm just going to shrink this down to a typical web size which would be 72, and let's make this really small to show you the effect. This is gonna be a really small image. It's just gonna be two by three almost, okay? So now we're, we're a really teeny tiny image here that I supposedly got off the web. You can barely see it on this screen. All right, 
So if I go back to image size to demonstrate this, if I were to just change my resolution to 300, and this is something that I know a lot of people could do thinking that they're going to get a high resolution image. But if I were to do that, okay, and actually want to increase the image size um, here for pixel dimension, so I'm not going to change that like I did, but we're just going to bump this to 300. Well, the image is going to increase, but look how cruddy the quality is. See how blurry that is compared to what happened when we were using a high resolution image? This is why you can't take images off the internet and blow them up and use them in your print projects. Can you do it? Sure. Should you do it? No. And for if only for the reason that the quality is really bad. But also, you don't really have the right to take images off the internet and use them like this in your print projects. So that's another reason all in its own. But the big one here is that it's not going to print well at all. So this is why it's very important for your print projects to use high quality, high resolution images from the beginning, because you cannot go bigger from a small image, but I can always go back down. So that is the key here for image resolution, particularly photos taken out of a camera, how to convert those to 300 DPI very quickly while retaining your original high resolution image. And then what happens if you have a low resolution image and you try to make it a high resolution image? It doesn't work as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave comments below. I do my best to read them all and answer questions if possible. Also, you can send in ideas for upcoming episodes or shoot me an email to ideas at nikkihart.com. I do enjoy reading all of your comments. And also, please subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all of the latest tips, tricks, and all things design here at Design Like a Pro. See you next time. Music